Well, good afternoon. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It is October 1st, Tuesday, and this is an update for the sensitive information sharing environment, the Fleet Response Working Group uh, that puts together trusted information so it can be shared across state borders and also through private sector organizations to help the movement of uh, vehicles, fleet utility vehicles, transportation, logistics, food, fuel, medical supplies uh, across states. Uh, this is a tropical update, and I'm gonna give a little bit of an update on the situation in North Carolina, as well as the recovery effort from the entire path of Hurricane Helene. Well, out, this is the tropics, folks. Uh, we do have two active uh, systems right now. Uh, one is Tropical Storm Kirk. Kirk has 70 mile per hour winds and it is uh, intensifying. That's out in the middle of the Atlantic. I want to focus uh, first on the uh, area in the United States uh, over uh, the mid-Atlantic states, uh, extending all the way down into uh, the impact area in the Florida uh, Big Bend area. Uh, well, this cloudiness is the slight remnants of Hurricane Helene. Uh, it has been absorbed, as we've been talking about the last several days, in an upper-level low-pressure system that is just spinning and spinning and spinning. It really needs something to kick it out. And you can see that uh, thing that's going to kick it out. This is a cold front extending from a low way up around Hudson Bay. Uh, that cold front and trough of low pressure uh, is going to kick this area of cloudiness out over the ocean and get it out of here. Uh, in the meantime, it's going to create some area... Areas of showers, perhaps some heavy downpours still uh, in Southeast Virginia and Central Virginia, fortunately away from uh, the devastation in Western North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee, Western South Carolina and Georgia. Gonna kick this bad weather out. I know we've been dealing with it for uh, days and days, upwards of uh, 10 days, 11 days now. And uh, that's all gonna be pushing out over the ocean to be replaced by some decent weather over the next several days. Now, we are watching in the tropics, as I mentioned, uh, Tropical Storm Kirk, and I'm um, just zooming down here to the tropics, or uh, moving down, this is Kirk. Uh, it, it has a very well-defined uh, circulation. Uh, the good news is it's going to remain out in the Atlantic Ocean. It poses no threat to the United States, no threat to the islands, um, in the Caribbean at all. It's going to be taking a path up into the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, behind it, we're watching very closely another system uh, that is likely to develop, very high chance of this developing into a tropical system. If it does get named, it will be Leslie. Uh, this is Kirk. This will be Leslie, and uh, we'll be watching it very closely. Again, currently, no threats uh, to the United States. Now, I know we've been talking over the last couple of days about potential development in the Western Caribbean. That is what would affect us. And so this is GeoCollaborate. And um, I've widened out a little bit just to show you what it looks like. This is the area that we're watching uh, right here in the Pacific. Oops. Uh, right here in this uh, orange area. I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, well, let me just take this full screen uh, so you can see what it looks like. I'll zoom out. Um, this is the potential area of tropical development that the Hurricane Center is watching. It has a 40% chance. But I got to tell you, looking at the models and looking at the trends, there's no real major uh, tropical cyclone uh, that seems to want to develop in the Gulf of Mexico. But there could be a series of low pressure systems, uh, one or two of them, uh, that do give some heavy rain to uh, the Gulf Coast. Where exactly, uh, we're not exactly sure because uh, the system hasn't developed yet and the models still are quite a bit uh, all over the place. Uh, but with the trough of low pressure coming in, that's going to kick out the remnants of Helene and the area of rain, uh, it looks like that might tie up some rain showers or move them across Florida. Uh, it doesn't look like right now, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that there's any major chance for a tropical cyclone development, but we will be watching it very closely. Uh, the Hurricane Center still gives us a 40% chance of development.
and we want to pay very close attention to that. Uh, the Hurricane Center are the experts in tropical development uh, out to seven days. And uh, if this is a concern, we want to communicate it and make sure you know what's going on. Uh, this is Tropical Storm Kirk. I mentioned it uh, turning up to the north. That is what it's forecast to do. And this is the area of development that we're watching that could become Leslie over the next 24 to 48 hours. Although this, uh, this area does mean a, a seven-day outlook, uh, but it'll probably become named well before then. Now, I do want to zoom in here to the Mid-Atlantic because I outlined in GeoCollaborate this green area. This green area is the area of recovery operations from Hurricane Helene within this green area. I highlighted it because if there were any um, flash flood warnings or there were any uh, things going on in this area, uh, we'll be able to see them right away. Now, just outside of this recovery area, uh, we can see that there is a chance for some uh, heavy, intense rainfall in central Virginia uh, from the remnants of Helene. And I've turned the radar on as well. There is some heavier showers around Richmond uh, heading down towards the Norfolk area. So there could be some localized flooding there. Uh, thank goodness it's not in the mountains of uh, southwestern Virginia or western North Carolina or uh, eastern Tennessee. There are some pesky showers. I know they're irritating and they really you just want to get that weather out of here. Well, that is going to be slowly moving out. And by Thursday, uh, we'll start to see uh, more consistent sunshine in the mountain areas because there'll be high enough humidity. Uh, the clouds may be difficult to break up, uh, but I think we'll see some sunshine there uh, as well. That'll help uh, some of the recovery efforts and really help pick up some of the spirits uh, of those folks that have been working so hard to recover uh, after Hurricane Helene. This is the um, North Carolina uh, dense network of river observations and predictions. And so here's the good news. Let me talk about that first. Uh, most of the gauges here in Western North Carolina are going down, which is great. Uh, they're going down, which means uh, the floodwaters continue to recede. There are some uh, gauges here that are in near flooding uh, because the water keeps going down and it's near flooding. So it's going to give us that alert that there's a, a gauge here south of Asheville, uh, but the level keeps going down and that's good. Uh, even over into central North Carolina, you know, this water that fell, the rain that fell has to drain somewhere and it's heading out uh, toward, through these rivers and watersheds out towards the uh, Sound, Pamlico Sound, and out towards the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, there are some gauges uh, that are uh, increasing uh, because of some of that drainage. Um, I want to uh, show you one of those here. Here's one in uh, Cape Fear uh, at Willow Husk uh, Lock near Tar Heel, North Carolina. This one is in minor flooding. The stage is 43 feet, and we can click on that and uh, show you where that gauge is. Uh, the gauge trend right now is that it is falling. As far as power restoration, uh, the crews are doing a tremendous job. We've had more than 50,000 uh, utility crews that have been deployed both uh, at their headquarters and also on the road to help uh, with power restoration. Uh, power out as of today, and this is as of 12 o'clock this afternoon, is down to 1,579,000 customers. This is incredible. Uh, if you remember just a number of days ago, it was up in the 4 million and more range. And so it's really great to see that power has been restored. Power has been restored to 2,611,318 customers. That is a Herculean task. And uh, if you come across any utility crews that are restoring power, please tell them thank you for all of your efforts. Uh, the ones, uh, the counties and states that have been hit so hard in North Carolina and, and uh, Georgia and Western South Carolina, it will take longer 
Uh, it'll take longer to restore power in those areas, uh, but they are working very hard uh, to do that. And so uh, what I wanted to show here is uh, the traffic in Western North Carolina. These are messages from the state of North Carolina to everybody who is trying to uh, get out there to Western North Carolina. First of all, don't. Dangerous conditions in Western North Carolina exist. There are shortages of food, water, gas, power, and communication. Communication lines are down. Uh, internet is very spotty. Uh, Non-emergency travel is still prohibited in Western North Carolina. Uh, and local roads remain closed, many of them washed out. And so it's going to take another huge effort to rebuild some of these roads just to get into some of the towns that have been isolated uh, by these heavy rains. Also, uh, you cannot get from North Carolina to Tennessee via I-40 or I-26. There may be closed roads not listed on drivenc.gov. Uh, many of these areas are not able to report at this time. That's what drivenc.gov relies on, are local reports. And the internet is down and cell uh, communication is down in many locations so that those reports cannot be updated. Also, people evacuating from Asheville. If you're evacuating from Asheville, you can use I-40 East or I-26 East. Uh, trees have been cleared, there are pathways open, and you can get out of Asheville that way using I-40 East or I-26 East. Now, I also wanna just talk about quickly a fuel delivery program uh, that is a wonderful program that is operating right now to get fuel to businesses, and also governments. It's the, from the uh, Emergency Fuel Delivery from the Energy Marketers of America. Uh, these are volunteers uh, that deliver fuel around the country that have said, we are available to deliver fuel to those who need it. And those are businesses and organizations and government agencies, not individuals, unfortunately. There are too many individuals in need of fuel but you do need to go places to get fuel. So if you uh, are in need of fuel, please contact Sherry Stone at the number listed or Sherry's email, and she will coordinate you uh, with a person, an organization who can deliver fuel into the disaster areas. Uh, this is a tremendous effort. Uh, there have been requests already made and uh, connections are being made to get fuel into areas. We know the longer the power remains out, uh, that fuel is a critical necessity. And this program from the uh, Energy Fuel Delivery, uh, Emergency Fuel Delivery Program, uh, Disaster Response Program, is a great one uh, from the Energy Marketers of America. Uh, so that's it for this update. I do want you to uh, take a look at this next uh, little piece that describes how power restoration priorities are determined. Uh, this information is provided from the Edison Electric Institute, EEI, and hopefully it'll give you a better idea for the process uh, that all the uh, crews and utilities go through to determine priority for restoring power. Uh, please have yourself a good rest of the day, and please, Take care of yourself and take care of your neighbors. This is what the power restoration process looks like. The first thing that they look at are power plants. The power plants are the primary sources of power production. They're assessed for damage and restored. Then they move to transmission lines, high voltage transmission lines serving thousands of customers over wide areas are repaired. Then the substations. Substations are brought online in order for power to reach local distribution lines. Then essential services. Power is restored to essential services and facilities critical to public health and safety, such as hospitals, nursing homes, fire and police departments, and water systems. 
Then large service areas. Crews are dispatched to repair lines that will return service to the largest number of customers in the least amount of time. Service lines to neighborhoods, industries, and businesses are restored systematically. And finally, individual homes. Once major repairs are completed, service lines to individual homes and smaller groups of customers are restored. Some customers may not be able to receive power to their homes because of damage. Flooding can damage electrical systems and inspections by a licensed electrician may be required before a home can be receive power. Customers should never touch damaged equipment.